All right. Happy Wednesday, everyone. We are going to go ahead and get started. Um, for those of you who are new or just joining us, welcome. Um, I'm here in our Atlanta location, and um, we may have some member or people joining who are not members. So, so if that's the case, welcome. We'd love to hear from you guys in the chat box. Um, please you know, participate throughout the call. We want this to be super interactive. Today, Drea is going to be presenting on Elastic Workforce, but um, we want y'all to, you know, uh, interject and ask questions as much as you would like. Um, she'll go through essentially what the Elastic Workforce is and how our members can benefit from using it. And then we'll also get into some specifics related to holiday and how Elastic Workforce can really set you up for success there. Um, I will be sort of moderating throughout, but feel free to ask questions um, or comments in the chat box, like I mentioned. So um, quickly, a couple of housekeeping items for current members. We have a holiday member appreciation um, Halloween happy hour tomorrow with beer, wine, and spooky snacks. So um, costumes encouraged. Uh, please check in with your, um, with your local team for more details. Uh, our next... Um, uh, session is going to be focused on live commerce. And I'm just sharing now because I want to put it on y'all's radar. We're going to be hosting it live from our Atlanta location. And it's going to be on December 2nd. It's going to be in the evening and, you know, we'll help y'all get set up with everything for the demo. Um, think, you know, similar to QVC. So um, it's just a great way to showcase your products and make some sales in a different way. So um, keep an eye out for more details coming on that. Um, but if you're interested in participating, go ahead and let me know and reach out. Um, all right. So without further ado, I'm going to let Drea go ahead. Um, she is awesome. She started as a operations associate at our Atlanta location, and now she's an eForce product manager. So she's really a great resource for y'all to dive in and get all of your um, questions answered. And um, Hello, everyone. Nice to see y'all commenting in the chat box. Um, without further ado, I'll let Drea take it away. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Drea Williams. Um, as Leslie said, I started with Saltbox um, as an operations associate, and I just celebrated my one year anniversary on the 17th of October. Um, so super excited to, to be in this position. Um, we, I actually started as a holiday helper or operations associate. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited to be able to shape the, the future of eForce. Um, I think it's super important and hopefully after, uh, you know, this presentation, you guys will have more questions. You guys will be able to, um, fully understand what eForce is and, how beneficial it can be to your business. Um, I do have a background in e-commerce, I have a background in retail management and uh, closet design, um, which will, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll help me, I guess, delve into our, uh, one of our newest services, uh, in, inventory design. Um, and I think you guys will all be excited about that. So without further ado, I am going to share my screen All right, so today we're going to talk all about eForce. Um, <clears throat> so just an agenda for today, uh, we're going to discuss some of the eForce services that we're currently offering. Um, again, the new service that I spoke about, inventory design. And then lastly, we're going to talk about some ways that uh, eForce can help you guys uh, prepare better for the holidays. All right, so our services. First and foremost, we have assembly. Uh, so assembly is basically just combining uh, different parts together to complete a whole. Um, that could be um, boxes, as you see in this photo. Um, these actually came uh, very flat and on a pallet. Uh, we had about 100 of them, and we used some of our eForce team to help build these up for our fulfillment department. Um, that could also include building shelves uh, for uh, new members that are moving in, um, 
old members that are adding shelves because their inventory is, is growing. Um, but anything you need as far as construction, uh, we can do that. Um, all right, next service is going to be kidding. Um, so I do have a video here. This was taken in our Dallas location. Uh, our member Black Lit, um, they do a subscription kit where uh, they're putting uh, African-American literature. Um, I mean, you can see they have bookmarks there. They're doing like some candles and, and smells. But um, what we do for kidding is basically combine uh, multiple parts um, for an order or, or for shipment, excuse me. Um, so that could be, again, those subscription boxes. Um, it could be, uh, we just got a new member called Axel Health. And what they do is provide um, medical kits, like home medical kits for nurses. And depending on um, what the nurses is, is going to the home for, it could be uh, COVID testing or uh, simple, like, you know, drawing blood for, um, you know, what, whatever they need. Basically, they can, we can go ahead and, and put in their syringes, their um, gauzes, whatever it is, but any anything that has multiple parts in it, um, we can go ahead and prepare those early so that when, you know, your orders come around, they're ready for shipment. Next service we have is receiving and sorting. So uh, we can receive your products in our warehouse. Um, you do not have to be here. Um, upon receipt, we will uh, confirm the quantity that it's supposed to be. We will make sure that the uh, boxes are not uh, damaged to the point of your product being damaged. Uh, we do, uh, you know, once, once those come in, once we have received, we do sign for them for you. Um, and we can also sort you know, however they need to be sorted. If they need to be filtered into your warehouse suite, we can do that. We can go in and actually, uh, this kind of goes into another service as far as the inventory management, but we have even um, gone into these boxes. You see this one is open here, but you know, we can double check with the packing slips and make sure that, um, you know, the right quantities of your products or your items are there um, and just make sure that they're arranged in your warehouse suite. The next service is fulfillment uh, or pick and pack. So fulfillment has a lot of different components to it, um, but it's basically just uh, assisting and supporting in, in the fulfillment process. Um, that can also include um, order management, um, picking your items, packaging your items. Um, if you see here, um, we have an associate that is placing the like thank you inserts into the bags um, before we ship them out. So uh, we have members that do it several different ways. Um, one way in this particular video is um, our member Angela with the company Bamboo. She will come in and print her labels and she'll also print the packing slips. And so we take the packing slips for her and go ahead and pick the orders. Um, she has a system where she likes to quality check them before we pack. And then once that's done, we just put the labels on them and we put them out for shipment. Next, we have inventory management. This is another one that also includes um, several different uh, things, but the the majority of it is just making sure that you have availability and accessibility um, of, of all of the products that you carry, um, whether that is uh, restocking your items. Um, you know, a lot of times people will store their slower moving items way up top or way down low. Um, that includes us coming in and actually rearranging your inventory for you so that's easier access to fulfill your orders. Um, we can track the inventory levels um, as far as, uh, let's say you have 20 items on the shelf and that is your, uh, the life cycle of those 20 items is normally two weeks, you know, so let's say at the end of that two weeks, you get down to three items on that shelf and they need to be uh, restocked. We can make a note of that um, and then also kind of replenish that area um, that you need. Um, and this also includes cycle counting. Um, 
don't know how many of you still do this, but um, it is good to always know how many items you have um, in stock. I mean, it, it's easy to, I mean, some, some, uh, some systems do have like inventory tracking or inventory management, but, um, you know, mistakes happen and, you know, one return may not get put back into the system because it's, you know, an exchange or however, um, but it is always to good have to some, to have someone there, um, that can actually count and make sure, um, you know, you have what you say you have on your website. And uh, I guess going from inventory management, this is a good time to talk about uh, inventory design. Hey, Drea, which before you do again, that, can you... is one of our newest services that we're offering. Um, inventory design is uh, similar to warehouse design, if you guys know warehouse design at all. But warehouse design is basically taking uh, components or areas of your warehouse and optimizing them for um, a more efficient workflow. Um, so with inventory design, we do that same, we take that same concept and do it just in your, uh, your warehouse suite. All right. So why inventory design? All right. So uh, inventory design is um, in place to help you get as much value as possible. Um, out of your suite, uh, a lot of our members are coming from home, you know, working out of their garage or basement or dining room area and have never been in a warehouse. So what we would like to do is provide a service that can help you uh, optimize that space. Um, it is designed to uh, purposefully utilize the space to create uh, a smooth functioning of operations, um, not only to your business, but, um, you know, just the, the, the total operation in general. You just want to make it a smooth process. Um, and just a second. All right. And uh, having a clutter-free, worry-free space. Um, being organized and being clean is, is uh, extremely important to uh, your mental health. Um, studies show that over 80% of people uh, suffer with uh, an additional stress and anxiety uh, during the holiday season. And so, um, you know, not, not just this service in general, but, you know, being more organized in your life can uh, help alleviate that, especially during the holidays where you guys are trying to, uh, you know, run your businesses. Right. And I've gone far. I uh, just want to see if there are any questions um, for anyone so far. Can you hear me, Drea? Nope, I can't now. Okay, cool. I was curious if you could give um, a little more detail on what cycle counting is. Okay, so... Cycle counting would be, um, so I guess end of year would be a really good example. Um, after the holidays, um, a lot of companies will run promotions, um, you know, and have a surge in sales to where it's very hard to uh, manage and track inventory. So after that holiday season is normally when uh, in retail, cycle counting happens where it's basically a refresh of um, inventory and making sure that, you know, if, if you say you have 30 shirts, you know, 10 medium, 10 small, 10 large, um, that that is an accurate, um, you know, depiction of what you actually have. And it's just kind of a, uh, like I said, a refresh going into a new year, um, a new season after promotion. It's all good where you don't have time in the moment to um, you know, to track and manage your inventory. Got it. And then we have um, one question from Angela too. Um, Can you see the chat right. box? Angela says, yep. Okay. Angela says, would you suggest certain people for certain tasks or should we assume anyone on staff can do, say, kidding? So great question. Um, I would say yes, we would suggest certain people for certain tasks. However, um, the idea is 
for our um, training to make every associate well-rounded. Um, we do have, um, let's say, a feedback channel. Um, it doesn't get uh, as much engagement as we like, but uh, that is where we can find out, you know, hey, was this person, um, you know, not as, as quick as the last person, you know, that came in and did kidding for me, I would prefer this person. Um, so we do have that in place just so we can uh, better gauge, you know, our associates' strong points. Um, but as far as kidding, it, it, and it's really just a time thing with kidding, um, as long as we know uh, what products are going where, um, you know, just, just, I think just having open communication and, and letting us know if, if um, you know, if something's not working out, because that's the only way we know. Um, we can, uh, you can, you know, uh, select your preferred associate but um yeah i mean the, the more feedback we get the better we can um align associates with the task that that you guys are booking all right i'm gonna go ahead All right. All right. So <clears throat> as far as inventory design is concerned, there are over 10 or 20 different uh, principles that um, I use that we will use to um, create that, that uh, smoother functioning space. Um, but for the sake of time, uh, we're just going to go over five of them. Um, and this, I try to do it in a way where it is um, simple and easy uh, for you guys to understand and for you guys to do, and then also in order of how we would start the process of uh, designing your space. So the first principle being grouping, second homes, third labels, four building up, and then last but not least, the triadic design. All right, so for grouping, grouping is taking account of what you have, uh, what you need, and what can go. Um, a lot of times, when, you know, you start businesses or even in your home in general, we start to collect things that we have uh, emotional attachments to. Um, but a lot of times we don't necessarily need them. We don't use them as often, and they take up space um, when we're not using them. So the first thing is to... Um, just look at everything, you know, go over all of the products that are in your space, go over um, all of the, all of the supplies that are in your space as well, and just group them, uh, you know, group your, your like items, right? Are you, do you have returns that are just laying around on shelves? Do you have overstock items that are, um, taking up space? Do you have discontinued products um, that are taking up space? Um, what you should do is group those. Um, and I have this picture here from our member Chunks in Seattle. Um, they have a very clever way of taking those items and reselling them. They do um, mystery boxes, mystery bags that just has random items in them uh, for things that were left over. If you see here, um, they have this imperfect checker claw, um, and they have a very, a very stringent uh, quality assessment process. I don't know if you guys have ever used those um, hair claws, but any of the ones that actually like stick a little bit or a little hard to to open, it don't just have that smooth, um, that smooth open. They put to the side, um, and then they do something like this where they just put it on their website as imperfect um, and they resell them. So it's a good way to get rid of supplies and just make room for, for newer things. Um, as far as your uh, supplies are concerned, do you have you know, extra boxes that are laying around? Do you have built boxes actually? Because those take up the most space. Um, packing materials, 
um, equipment that you no longer use? Do you have a, you know, let's say a heat press that doesn't work anymore that you don't use that that's just taking up space? Or even, you know, some of the um, the tape, the, the um, what do you call them? The adhesive tape dispensers um, where you use your, uh, you put your branded tape on there to wrap on your boxes. Does that not work? Do you use it often? You know, are you still using branded tape? Different things like that 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 may be taking up space. Um, even furniture, like if you have shelves that were once, you know, full of product, but you sold all the product on those shelves, or you know, you have extra chairs laying around the space that that no one has used, you know, in let's say thirty or sixty days. Um, those are all things that you want to take account of and and figure out what you need to do with them. Um, you know, do you want to uh, break down all your, your boxes um, so that they're flat and you can store them that way? Um, do you want to, you know, have a bag or a box that you keep all of your, your packaging supplies in, um, et cetera? The next principle we're gonna go into is homes. So creating a home for everything that you have just um, taken an inventory account of and grouped, um, we are more likely to keep a space clean if there's a home for, for what we're looking for. You know, if you have, let's say, a cup here and, you know, there's a cup holder on the table, you're going to sit the cup in the cup holder. You're not going to sit it on the table. Um, so just assigning or creating proper homes for your necessary items. Um, you know, you have to ask yourself, like, when's the last time I used this item? You know, if if this, let's say, printer is, is sitting on your desk and it has been there for ages and you, you don't even use that printer, you use, let's say, a, a Rolo printer or something just specifically for your labels, um, you know, getting rid of those and, uh, you know, ha having everything that's in your area, like, what what makes the most sense for your workflow, right? So if you're not using a printer, why do you need it on the desk? It doesn't need to be there, right? You can you can put you know your computer or your charger or uh, even your cup holder in that place just to uh, you know be more efficient in that that area that you work in the most. Um, lastly, use using boxes, bins totes or any type of stackable containers, um, you will find, and well, you'll see in some of these next slides, but a lot of times we use a shelf um, and we just put, let's say, um, let's say t-shirts, right? So t-shirts come, for the most part, they come in like these plastic bags um, and is, you have a shelf, right? So you just start to stack and stack and stack those t-shirts um, on those plastic bags, right? So what's happening is you can only go up so high um, when you're stacking. So the ideal is to have a box so that you can fill up the box. And then if you have more room on top of that, like dead space in that area, Put another box on top of it filled with whatever whether it's a smaller box um, whether it is two or three small boxes um, whatever you need you just need to uh, have that home and maximize those those spaces we're going to talk a little bit more about that um, but first in addition to creating homes for all of your products you also need to label your products um, Ideally, uh, you would want to uh, have a system where you can literally just look on your shelf and see exactly what's there. You don't need to reach and grab. You don't need to uh, grab a box cutter and open this box uh, just so that you can see what's in it. Um, if you look at this before picture here, this is actually a, a suite we did inventory design for here in Atlanta. And... Uh, they were fulfilling orders and picking from these boxes. Um, there are a few that have really small labels, um, but then there are, you know, there's other writing on them, there's other stickers on them, so it's really hard to um, pick efficiently um, with, you know, a system like this. So what we did was went in and actually 
use some boxes that they already had <clears throat> and just added really large labels um, that you can clearly see from afar so you know exactly what, uh, what area you're going to, um, what product you need to be, needs to be pulled. Um, and you can use what you have. Like I said, you know, these boxes were uh, some, some of those random boxes that they had laying around, um, but we took account for what was there and said, hey, you know, let's just use these boxes to create a, a new system for uh, picking and packing their orders. Um, if you look at the stickers, these are actually uh, shipping labels that they have. Uh, shipping labels normally come in, you know, rolls of 500 or 1,000. So, you know, using 100 or, or two to uh, create labels is not a, a terrible idea. Um, they are adhesive labels, but you can always, if let's say this says OGLV, right? So let's say they change it to Green Lux, right? All it takes is taking another packing slip, writing Green Lux and sticking it right on top of this. And then that's the Green Lux box um, as well. So use markers always. Um, so that you can uh, easily read. And I keep saying you, but it's it's more of, um, so the idea is that you don't always have to do your dirty work or, you know, your handiwork, whatever it may be. But this is a system where anyone that is picking or packing your orders, whether it be somebody that you hire, whether it be, uh, someone from our eForce team, whoever it is, if that packing slip says, I need two green Lux, you know, two OG LVs, you can actually go in here and just say, okay, here's the green Lux and here's the OG LV. Um, it's clearly printed large with a marker, um, you know, and it, it, it just makes the process um, easier and a lot smoother. Um, use the side of the box with the least design. So as I said up top here, you see some of these uh, Home Depot boxes that have, you know, a print, whatever it is, it has labels. A lot of them, a lot of shipping boxes come with print on the side. You can see that just a little bit, but um, some sort of design um, or logo from the packaging or shipping company. Um, but you want to use a side that doesn't have anything so that there's no distraction from what you're actually looking for. Um, here I do have another tip of uh, minimizing the handling that you're doing. Uh, on average, you will touch your products about seven or eight times. You will touch it when it comes in and then you will unbox it and put it on a shelf. Um, you will likely rearrange that shelf, put it somewhere else, and then you will pick that product, um, you know, for shipping. You may do um, quality checks or whatever the case may be. So you just rack up the number of times that you're handling that box or, or that product. Um, ideally, you want to reduce that to two or three times over the, the entire span of the shelf life for that product. So that would mean you know, you have a system where as soon as the uh, boxes are delivered, you receive them, you have one person or you will unbox and place in that home that you have already set for it. And that's it until it's time to pack that order and ship that order out. All right, we're going to go... All right, next we have building up. So you want to locate and use as much dead space as possible. Um, you can turn your dead space into storage space. Um, I love this picture at the top left here. Um, this is a member in Atlanta, uh, Pet Love, where these are actually boxes that he has stacked from the floor up all the way. Um, I mean, as you can see above the, the modular walls, um, he had a container come in with 1,500 units and was trying to figure out how to uh, get all those units in their product. And they uh, found a, a great way 
but just using the, the air and the space that, that you do have. Um, I have another photo here. Uh, this is uh, Angela with Van Blue. Um, this is a before picture of her, um, you know, receiving product and just kind of laying. She sells um, bamboo sheet sets, uh, bedding, and pajamas. So these are pillowcases, um, and this kind of relates to those T-shirts I was telling you about, right? So it's only so high you can go up before they start to slip and lean and just become a mess to uh, to pick from. So what we did uh, instead of having, you know, these sheets laying down, there's one, two, three, four sheets, five, six, seven, about, let's say, let's say 10 sheets um, on this entire shelf. Um, and we went in and did this inventory design service. And now each of these rows on this side has five sets of uh, bedding in there. Um, so there's like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 um, sets of sheets just on that one shelf that, that, you know, here we had about 10 or 12, say. Um, and this is also another example of building up. I mean, if you look kind of in this area here, there is a lot of dead space. Um, there's actually an empty bin right there. Um, which could be filled with, with some of those items that you've taken inventory, taken account for. Um, and I don't know if you guys can see this, but we did actually use this bin um, right here on the bottom for some pillowcases. So, you know, just, just taking that bin and using it for something, if it's going to take up space, you know, it might as well um, have something stored in it that's useful. So, yeah, so building up here, um, these... There is two rows on this top shelf and uh, two rows on this top shelf, um, but we turned that into um, three, um, and then we just stacked them all the way all the way across as much as possible, um, and got I believe this was three pallets of inventory that came in um, into the suite just by you know building up, you know using this shelving space. Um, wisely. All right, I am going to see if there are any questions. <laughs> Makes your head hurt. All right. Uh, all right. All right. So I will continue. All right, and after building up, um, last but not least, we have the triadic design. Um, this is probably the most helpful um, principle of inventory design, and it requires setting up uh, three different zones for uh, your products to optimize your fulfillment. Um, here, uh, we have three zones. The first zone being your top selling items. Um, those items you want to keep, um, closest to your packing area so that it's just a grab and go, you know, uh, they should be stored at eye level. Um, well, between waist level and eye level. So there's no bending. They're just really easy to grab. Right. So, this, this little small corner right here um, is showing where that packing table is. And this zone one is filled with uh, men's pajamas, which are her or were her top selling items at the time. So zone two, um, you will put your average selling items. Um, those will be slightly above your zone one as far as, you know, slightly above the eye level and then slightly below waist level, not necessarily on the bottom shelf. Um, sometimes you, you know, you can't avoid that, but um, yeah, so, so those items uh, are items that do move. They don't move as fast as your top selling items, um, but they should be, if you're using one rack, um, they should be adjacent to the packing station or adjacent to the shelf that has the top selling items on them. 
um, if you're using side-by-side like, -side racks. The third zone would be your lowest selling items, right? So those are the items that would go way up high and way down low, right? So you avoid bending at all costs on a, a, on a regular basis as much as possible. Um, if you go back here, we see some of these items down here. Um, actually, I'll use this after picture. But yeah, so some of these color waves here, uh, the white sheet set was the um, slowest moving uh, set of sheets people normally want the uh, or wanted the light blue or gray, um, you know, for whatever reason. But then also storing the overstock stuff that, that we didn't necessarily need up here. That also goes back to taking account of what you have. Like, is this extra product, you know, are these... 5, 10, 15, 20, you know, uh, California King sheet sets, plenty to have right here. Do we need to have less and create more space for queen sheet sets? We all, we took all of that into account when uh, designing her space here. Yep. All right, um, so try design. Do we have any questions? I'm gonna just double check real quick. Um, we are going to move right along into the next section, no questions. Awesome. All right. So those are our five principles for inventory design. Again, as I said, there are a bunch of different ones that we use uh, when doing this in the member suite. Um, and, it, and a lot of it can be different based on the member. Um, but a part of what we do is um, a consultation beforehand just so we get an idea of how you currently um, you know, how you, how you currently operate in your space. Um, the idea is for it to be um, beneficial to you and not just, you know, just general generic, um, you know, generic advice. All right, so. Drea. All right, so holiday prep. Drea, can you hear me? Yes, I can now. Okay. Hey, I was just going to, um, I was just going to clarify for everybody that um, the inventory design piece is something that we're going to be rolling out soon. It is going to be an e-course product, but yeah, I mean, we can go ahead and start with anyone now that's interested, but just to keep an eye out, we're going to be sending some like much more formalized things of how it would work and um, some examples and uh, there's going to be an intake form and all this stuff. So uh, just wanted to let y'all know if you haven't seen that yet, it's coming soon. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Um, all right. And just to follow up on that, uh, you guys will start to see more, uh, formalized communication about eForce. Um, we launched this service. Um, like I said, when I started as a holiday helper, which is what we were calling it at the time, um, we realized that it was very helpful and, uh, it is a product that, that we are, um, heavily invested in and um, it's all about you guys. So if there is, you know, thing, if there are things that you guys need that we don't currently offer any services, uh, you know, it can be creative, it can be, you know, videography, it could be data, it could be whatever. Um, we just want to get an idea of uh, how we can better, better serve you guys. And, and that's kind of my role um, here is to understand um, what you all need and what, what will help you uh, run your businesses smoother and grow faster. Um, so I will step into the holiday prep portion. Um, so what I did here was everybody has holiday tips and holiday uh, guides and all these things. Um, I... I'm not going to preach on that. Um, what's the best, you know, uh, tip for your business? But I did take three um, that I found that 
may be um, generally beneficial um, or that relate to kind of um, some of the things we talked about. So the first tip being make sure your inventory is stocked. Um, it's nothing worse than going into a holiday season, um, you know, early and being out of stock on some of your most popular items. Um, a lot of times consumers will make an exception during the holidays to buy things that they've already been looking at or, you know, possibly could not have afforded before or, you know, didn't have the occasion to buy um buy for so you know making sure that um making sure you know exactly what you have to sell um would be very helpful um and i just put some some little services that eForce can can help you with right so inventory management you know we talked through the inventory management just making sure that um again those numbers are correct you know do you have 10 mediums, you know, or do you have eight mediums? You know, if you sell 10 mediums online, then, you know, you're in trouble. There's a, a customer complaint and that's, you know, a whole nother, um, a whole nother stress factor to deal with. Um, so going into the next tip, which is perfect, is um, are you preparing to make your customer experience seamless? Um, you know, during the holidays, there are a lot of returns, um, exchanges, um, again, just making sure you're having stock, you know, so it's easy for people to come in and buy. Sorry about that. Um, but eForce e can help with you in the, the management of your inventory. Um, kidding, making sure that, um, you know, if you have a subscription box, make sure that those are all filled up you know, before you're selling, you know, if you, uh, let's say holiday boxes, right? Some people have, let's say a holiday box, like a winter kit or whatever, where it comes with a beanie and a pair of socks and uh, a candle or whatever it is, um, you know, uh, you know, just being prepared for that and making sure that you're not overwhelmed, um, with those orders, uh, making sure that you're able to get them out on time so you can cut back on uh, complaints or uh, bad reviews um, and all those things, right? And the last tip would be to create a great shipping and fulfillment workflow now. So you don't have much time, but uh, you do want to automate uh, your process as much as possible, um, whether that is, you know, going into whatever software, let's say Shopify, and updating your shipping methods. Um, if you're offering free shipping for the holidays, making sure that that works properly, um, your shipping rates, um, and then also just making sure that you're addressing those pain points. Um, whether that be your technology, if your discount codes aren't working, or um, let's say you have issues with packaging, let's say you sell uh, candles and, you know, glass candles that often get broken, you know, throughout the, uh, throughout the year on a regular basis, you know, you want to be extra careful during the holidays to make sure that, that you're giving people a bad, or I mean, not a bad experience, a great experience um, so that they don't, uh, you know, just, just feed off their emotion and leave terrible reviews. I mean, uh, again, the stress level is very high during the holidays. There are high expectations and uh, you just want to make sure that, that your customers are happy. So, um, you know, with eForce, we can, of course, help with the fulfillment um, help you with kidding, helping you with assembly. You know, if you have, you know, boxes that, like, let's say you use a 10 by 8 by 6 box, you know, and you run a promotion for the item that, that fits into that box, you know, why not have 100, you know, sitting on the side in the corner ready to be grabbed and, you know, and fulfilled? Um, just like when you go into a pizza shop and, you know, you look in their corners or somewhere in the back of their rooms and you see a bunch of pizza boxes, 
um, you know, just sitting there or even Chili's <laughs> and they're rolling, you know, rolling silverware, making sure that all the silverware is, is already uh, prepared. And there's a reason for that. So they can just, you know, just grab and go. Um, and I do want to, uh, we're going to post a poll for you guys on um, how you think e can help during the holiday season. Um, again, this service is about you guys, and um, I need your feedback to, to make this uh, product uh, great. And that's it. Yeah. Um, we added the poll, and it seems like a lot of... Uh, you can go ahead and stop sharing your screen if you're finished presenting. Um, a lot of... Uh, people on the call um, are requesting kidding and fulfillment help. So if anyone that responded would like to chime in or if there's any other questions that anyone would like to ask, now is the time. I'm gonna drop another question in the box too. I would, we would also love to know if there's anything you'd like to see Saltbox offering um, or helping your business in any way um, that we're not currently doing, whether it's eForce or otherwise, we would love to hear that as well. And uh, while we're waiting, um, I'm also going to go ahead and drop the links for each individual booking for the locations. This is maybe something you can explain a little bit, Drea. We are working really hard on the back end to make this much more user friendly for y'all. So there are three different links right now to book eForce in a more seamless way, which I'll add. This is Atlanta's. So if you're an Atlanta member, go ahead and click this link and bookmark it. Um, but Drea, can you maybe chime in on what we're working on behind the scenes um, to make this process a little bit better? Yeah, so uh, currently we're using the uh, solutions.saltbox.com app. Um, it could be a lot better and uh, we are in the process of uh, building in uh, a, salt box, a salt box OS um, where you just log into to one place, right? So currently we have um, multiple different uh, apps or third-party services that we're using to, you know, help us with, um, you know, securing doors and making sure you guys have access to doors or, you know, um, flex storage, you know, storing your items that don't fit in into your suite and e-force. Um, but this Saltbox OS system will be a, uh, a one-stop shop, so to speak, for uh, everything Saltbox. Um, and booking e-force will be um, uh, way easier than, than what it is with the, with the uh, Solutions app. You'll be able to um, go in. The idea is for it to be you know, less than five clicks for you to book. Um, you will be able to choose your preferred associate, your time, give us an idea of what you need help with, and then just go from there. Awesome. Thank you, Drea. I just sent um, the link, everybody. The pop-up is the solutions app for Seattle. So if you're a Seattle member, you can click there. And now I'm going to add the, D the Dallas one. Um, we had a request for photography help, uh, sorry, product photography help. Um, if you, if you'd like to elaborate, I think you're one of our Seattle members, uh, Preeti with Toka Box, but I just wanted to, um, find out if you're looking more on like the photography side of that or like the staging side, I would love to know, um, what types of, um, help you're looking for. Not sure if you're still on the call or not, but, uh, okay. Staging side, especially, um, Drea, can you speak a little bit to that, um, you know, if we can do that or if that's something that you guys have discussed? Yeah, so we have, yep, we have discussed uh, staging photography for sure. Um, that's come up on multiple occasions. But, um, yeah, so we are working through that currently. Uh, do you have a photographer already, Freaky? Let's see. No. She said no. Okay, so we kind of need... Both are one that can do all. Um, yeah, so that is something that we're we're looking into. Um, it's a great question. Thanks for that. And uh, I will get with the team and see um, 
see if we can we're able to do something specifically for holiday um but i will follow up with you uh via email thank you cool are there any other questions anyone that just wants to get on and talk to drea because you love her and don't get to see her every day like you used to <laughs> thank you all so much um i'm extremely nervous this is my first presentation but i appreciate your time so much and i hope that this was helpful okay hold on and one also second. if you do have questions that come up later just reach out to me at uh drea at saltbox.com i'll put it in the chat um super simple and angela um it it looks like uh, okay, Julie is just letting you know, Preeti, we'd love to discuss more about your needs in photography staging so you can go see her, Casey. Um, and Angela, I'm trying, I think because you're on your mobile device, I can't enable you to come on to the screen. I'm sorry about that. Next time. All righty. Thank everybody for joining. Happy Wednesday. Have a great rest of your week. Um, and, you know, reach out to us for some eForce help. All right. Take care. All right. Thank you.